Welcome back, real estate rock stars. Are you tired of throwing spaghetti at the wall when it comes to social media? If you said yes, then this show is for you. Expect to learn which platform, I'm talking Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, is best suited for which target audience, why what you're doing now isn't working, how to finally get over the fear of posting video, and stick around to the end to learn whether or not you should get a business page or stick with your personal page. The age-old question that everyone asks. All that and much more on today's show. Our guest is Will Draper. He's out of Raleigh, North Carolina. He's been in the industry for seven years, closes $20 million in production per year as a solo agent with an assistant, and specializes in marketing through video and becoming the local guide in the Wake Forest area. Guys, the 2024 Real Estate Rockstars Mastermind was the bomb. I am a little biased, of course, because I helped plan it, but it was awesome. Y'all, I cannot wait until next year. I cannot wait to hang out with you guys there next year in March in Austin yet again. We will sell out. So snag your ticket now. You can grab the link to register in the show notes or hit me up on Instagram at The Shelby Show. Shoot me a DM and I will share the link with you and any other info if you have questions. And with that, rock stars, please welcome Will Draper. Will, video and content marketing, what's not working? So, you know, everybody always likes to say the things like, you know, don't post generic content, you know, tips and tricks or buying and selling houses like that's not working. That again, that's a generic cop out answer, in my opinion. I think one of the biggest problems people have is they're making content for the wrong platform. And I ask this question to people all the time. I was like, where's your ideal client? Like, how old are you? Like, I'm in my mid 40s. I've got kids. Like, when I'm selling real estate, my clients are on Facebook. Why am I spending all of my time making content for Instagram where nobody's at? Right. In my area, I live in a small town outside of Raleigh, North Carolina, and I know maybe 10 people on Instagram and they're all real estate agents. Everybody I know from like my day to day life is on Facebook. So, what platform should I be making content for? It's probably Facebook if I'm trying to attract real estate leads, stay top of mind. And I think too many real estate agents get caught up Instagram, Instagram, TikTok, TikTok, Instagram. Mm-hmm. I was like, where are your clients? Right? Is it people you know, people you don't know? And like anytime I talk to people, I want to make sure they understand that distinction. So it's not just generic content, it's who are you making content for and what platform are they on? Are they doing searches on YouTube or are they spending on time on Instagram or are they on Facebook looking at, you know, people's kids' pictures? Like you have to understand. Yeah. Or marketplace, right? Like my wife's on there all the time doing porch pickup and like trying to sell all of her old kids' toys and clothes and stuff. Got so it's, it. I feel like people make content for the wrong platform all the time and they don't understand where their clients are actually at. Can we, can we break that down? Cause that is a really yeah. refreshing point that I've yet to hear on this podcast. And so mm-hmm. you mentioned you're 40 ish with kids and you're on Facebook. Can you tell me like, let's go buy platform and like who's on that yeah. platform? Of course. So, uh, and I, I don't want to profile. I, I don't want to do any of that type of stuff, like do ageism it, and all that stuff. To, no, just kidding. <laughs> but, but I'm a middle aged person with kids. Most of those people, non millennials, beyond the millennial age, a lot of them started on Facebook and all these other platforms came later. Does that mean they're not on those platforms? No. But I feel like people go to TikTok and Instagram to be entertained, they go to Facebook to stay in touch with the people that they know. Typically, that's going to be the people in your community. So if you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, not to mean you can't get business elsewhere, right? But if you're trying to stay top of mind with the people that you already know, the people that live in your community, Facebook's the platform you want to be on. Now, conversely, like Instagram, I find, and I've worked with hundreds, thousands of real estate agents and done you know, coaching and training and mentorship and speaking and all this type of stuff. And the ones that are in their 20s and 30s, they're on those other platforms because those are the platforms that were hot when they came onto social media. And Instagram and TikTok are great for reaching new audiences. Facebook is not necessarily great for reaching new audiences. It's great for retaining an audience that you already have. And then when we talk about YouTube, YouTube's just a different ball of wax because YouTube is 
people who are intentionally searching for stuff. And the people that are intentionally searching for stuff, when we're talking about real estate, they probably don't live in the location. They probably live elsewhere and they're like doing their research before they move to that particular spot. They might be doing it in that community, but more than likely not. So when you're targeting relocation, people moving to a particular area, YouTube is definitely the place you want to be there. If you're on Facebook and you're trying to target, all right, all the people that I know in my area, that's where you need to spend your time. If you're really trying to target people you don't know and you're trying for maximum reach, Instagram and TikTok are probably your platform. And I find that everybody I talk to and knowing myself personally, the people who do the best, who get the most leads, do the most business, grow the most on social media are the ones that focus on one platform and everything else is just ancillary to it. Dude, you knew that was my next question. I literally like had written down the quote. <laughs> Every, because, dude, people say this all the time where it's like, you need to be everywhere, you know, like omnipresent. It's such and a so, BS thing. I, I feel like it, people get so distracted too, because it's like you're literally constantly playing whack a mole, trying to keep up with like the algorithm for here and the content that's doing well here and like vertical versus horizontal versus, you know what I mean? Like, I'm literally mm-hmm. dizzy. So your perspective I, is great. I my perspective is the opposite of that. People are like, "Hey, you ha- you should post it everywhere." No, I don't think you should because that begins to get people overwhelmed. Most people don't have a content team behind them to do this stuff. Most people are solo agents or they're on a team that has a team lead and maybe they get a vid- videographer to do something once a month. You can't do all of that and sell real estate and still be a husband or a wife or a partner or a mom or a dad or whoever you are, find the platform that has the people you want to work with. Focus your content for that platform. If you want to share it to other platforms, fine. Just know it's not going to perform there. So for me now, I focus all of my time and effort on Instagram because I'm trying to help and work and educate real estate agents. When I'm on Facebook, I am not doing that for the most part. It's sharing pictures of my kids, telling dad jokes and sharing it to my stories with my son in the back seat. Like just trying to be like a real human, a real person. Like it's it's very targeted per platform. And I remember when I was selling real estate full time, I got my start on Facebook and then a little bit of YouTube. I never even touched Instagram. All of mine was Facebook, but I would create content on YouTube and then I would share it to Facebook before I knew you weren't supposed to do that. Right. Same. So but did that. Yep. I had no I had no idea. I was like, yeah, I'll just share it. It'll be totally fine. I was like, why did I get eight views? Wait, that, can that's you tell not people right. why that's not okay for people who are just learning this? Because it shocked me when I learned. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anytime you share links from another platform, so let's say you're trying to share your YouTube video, share a link to your Facebook. Facebook wants to keep people on their platform as long as possible. If you've seen the documentary, oh God, what's it called? Uh social code or social network or something like that, right? They're just talking about keeping people on the platform. If you put a link in your post and it's not a paid or not an advertised post, they will not show it because they want to keep people on the platform. They don't want to send them off. So if you have a YouTube video that you upload to YouTube, upload it natively to Facebook, but also know if it's longer than two minutes, it's not going to work, right? Because the platform is very specific on timelines. Okay. Wait, I don't know that one. Facebook, you can't do longer than two minutes. No, you can. You can do. You can do super long. Nobody's going to watch it because what are people doing on Facebook? They're doom scrolling. Scrolling, right? They're they're scrolling. Scrolling. They're not searching for information, right? So who's going to commit to a ten minute video when they're on Facebook trying to catch up with what everybody's done? No one. And this no one because this was always ingrained in my head. So before Facebook like switched their algorithm, uh, I remember. I come home from work. We put the kids to bed. My wife was like, "Hey, I'm going to go catch up on everybody on Facebook." You know, 45 minutes later, she's caught up because they used to have it in chronological order. You could catch up with all your friends. Now, I haven't seen any of my friends on Facebook in forever because, like, it's just whatever it serves me, right? So you can't catch up anymore. But what you're doing is you're just scrolling and looking at something for seconds at a time, seconds at a time. You're not going to get sucked into a 10 minute video because that's not what you go there for. You go there to escape. Right, you go to YouTube to search, and when you go to YouTube to search, you're committed to that long term. So, yeah, I, back in the day, I would share it to Facebook, but my videos at that time were like two minutes long anyway. Like, I, I couldn't talk for longer than two minutes without running out of shit to say. Dude, it's hard. I mean, stuff to say, stuff to say. Oh, dude, you're fine. You can say whatever. And I've I've actually chilled out a lot. I don't know if you were here in the beginning when I first took over hosting. I I naturally have like a super potty mouth. I was military for six years. Yeah, me too. That's, 
really no excuse. I just, it's a part of my language. And then there was a listener who came on and like got on the reviews and was like, this girl in her mouth. And I was like, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I tend to not have... I tend to not have the most uh, uh, calm language. I, I call it colorful. Uh, yes. It adds emphasis. I try not to overdo it, but it just right. it just comes natural. It right. just comes natural. Just yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. There was something else, though. Okay, something I wanted to note that I learned, and maybe you can confirm or deny, but like, not yeah. only with the link, t- sharing the links onto other platforms, they don't want to push that because they want to keep you on the platform. But also, mm-hmm. if people do see that link, and go to the content, you're now screwing up the algorithm because you have all of these different types of people who are seeing your content who should not naturally care about that content. And now the hypothetically like YouTube algorithm is like, well, now I don't understand what this video is about. So therefore, I'm also not going to push it to my audience. Yeah, it screws up two things. Um, So one, where the where your audience came from. You want to show up and search and results on YouTube, right? You don't want to be forced content from another platform because you can go into your analytics and you can see where people came from. So when that happens, people are expecting one thing. They get there, it might not be what they're expecting, then they bounce. So that's going to hurt your watch time. So your average view duration, all of that stuff goes way down. It, it affects everything and it throws off the algorithm. So never cross post that stuff. If you're going to Upload something to Facebook, like upload it natively. Don't have any interaction towards YouTube. Don't drive traffic there because your neighbor down the street really doesn't care what your pros and cons video on your YouTube channel is all about. Okay. Quick question before we move on from like this amazing, like I'm really enjoying this breakdown, by the way. But what are your thoughts on LinkedIn threads and Twitter slash X slash whatever it is? Lots of shiny object syndrome, right? So we were talking about like make content for a platform and stick to it and maybe go elsewhere. I'm not on threads because it's one more distraction, right? Could I reach more people? Sure. I'm not on TikTok. Could I reach more people? Sure. Uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn, for the most part, is great for B2B. It's great for me because I get to reach out to brokerages and team leads and figure out how I can work and help them. But as an agent, I, there will be a caveat here. If you... Most agents did used to work in a previous industry. You probably have a lot of contacts in that previous industry. That's great to stay top of mind with those people. It's great for recruiting. But as far as trying to find clients for the most part for agents, LinkedIn is kind of a waste of time. It is great for B2B. B2B stuff is where it's at. So if you're a team trying to grow, great spot to be. If you're a team lead, great spot to be. If you're a brokerage trying to acquire other people, great spot to be. But if you're a single solo agent, and you've been in real estate for a while, don't waste your time on LinkedIn. Focus on where your clients are. Especially if you're not in luxury. The only caveat... I t- totally yeah. agree with that, except for the luxury people that I talk to who really want to get into like in front of all of the C-level and like people with money who are like worldwide. I think that maybe is the only caveat. Maybe. Yeah. I, I had one client I worked with and her ideal client uh, that she was going to make content for were doctors. And all of these doctors were moving to like a specific place in Florida. And I was like, all right, how do you find these doctors? She goes, well, they, they find me online. I was like, define online for me because that's right. a, a really broad term. And she was like, I don't know. They find me online. I was like, all right, we need to dive into that some more. And then we talked about it and she had a lot of connections via LinkedIn because of like hospitals and stuff like that. So she could get connected with people and then post the content and they see it. So there's a way around it. It's just, it matters for such a small percentage of people. It really, really does. Uh, And when you said Twitter, like I, I go to Twitter for news, not necessarily like to find information about real estate. That doesn't mean it doesn't work. No, but I, I've just never really focused any time there because I love video. Like I know you can post some video, but it's not a video native platform. And it's, it's just not my jam. Okay, perfect. Now, I want to bring us back to the original question because I definitely like sidetracked us very hard. But the original question yeah. was like, what's not working in video and content? Okay. Okay. So... uh Full circle there, making content for the wrong platform, and also trying to do too many types of content. I feel like when I see a lot of people's feeds, depending on what platform it is, there's too many content buckets, right? They're trying to service everybody instead of one particular person, right? They're like, oh, I work with everybody buying and selling. 
right? It's like, well, no, you don't. Because if you're for everybody, you're for nobody, right? So like your vibe attracts your tribe. So put out your vibe, like who is it that you really want to work with? And this is something I had to kind of lean into early on in my career was I was like, I'll work with anybody at this point. Like I am broke. Like I need, I need leads. Like I'll work with anybody. So what is not working is not having a ideal client and not having a content bucket plan. So like when I first got started in real estate, I was like, all right, I want to work with people like me. I want to work with people that are families, have young kids, that care about schools, that like to go to breweries, that like to spend time outside. They want to live in this particular area of town. So they want to go do all the same things. They want to go to all the same events I do. So I made content for that particular audience. And lo and behold, six months later, 75% of my clients were exactly those people. They were people with kids because I made content on the best parks to take your kids to, uh, the events that were going on in town that weekend that were family friendly. This new brewery opened, that new brewery opened. Uh, there's this festival and this music's going on this weekend. And oh, by the way, this neighbor over here is super rad and you can walk to this awesome coffee shop. And then I would, I made neighborhood skateboard videos. So I would like show, do neighborhood tours, but I'd do it riding my skateboard. And that was like my shtick for YouTube is like, I make neighborhood skateboarding videos and then I would post those. And so that's how I tied like real estate into that content. But it was all because I knew the demographic I wanted to go after. Families with kids in these areas that don't care that I wear t-shirts and have lots of tattoos and ride skateboards. And so I started working with way cooler people because early on that was Realtor.com, Zillow, all these online leads. And you're just getting this giant mixed bag. And I was like, if I just put myself out there, you know, tell dad jokes on Facebook, make skateboarding videos on YouTube, people are probably going to want to, if they reach out to me, they're really going to want to work with me. I don't want to work with everybody. And then my business, it not only exploded, I went, my first year I did 19 transactions and then doubled that my second year and got to about 20 million in sales. And I cut off all online leads at that point because I started attracting all the right people into my business because I made content for the people I wanted to work with. And what's not working is not making content specific to the people you want to work with. Did you... Okay. When when you were like talking, you know, making this content for people, did you imagine yeah. you were making it for yourself? Or did you like have like a full out target audience worksheet that you like named the person, John, and you were like speaking to John every single time? Did you do that? So... You know I teach people about? to do that. I know exactly what you're talking about. I do that exercise with people. I was like, I want you to give them a name. What do they do for work? How much money do they make? Where do they used to live? Like, I wanted people, I want people to profile these people. And like, I had people give people names. Did I do that for myself? No, because I didn't know better at the time. Like, looking back, I probably would have given them a name. But honestly, I was speaking to who I wanted to be. Because I was highlighting the neighborhoods I wanted to live in. All the stuff that I like to do. And I was like, I can't afford that $900,000 house right now. But I want to talk to future me. right? And be cool with me being me. Like I can show up in Birkenstocks, jeans, and a t-shirt with a skateboard in the back of my car. And you're not going to think twice about it when I show up to an appointment that way. Because I just, I just wanted to be me. So honestly, I was talking to me, but maybe future me a little bit. Mm-hmm. No, that makes sense. And I, I think we all kind of go through that phase if you've been in this industry long enough where like you start out and you don't know real estate. So you think that you need to dress mm-hmm. professional. You need to wear your little brokerage name tag everywhere and have like the stuffy. Oh, I totally did it. Oh, I, <laughs> you know, and there's just... I did it for like the first six months and I was like, that's... I got a hair... My hair used to be like down like halfway down my chest mm-hmm. uh and i cut my hair like when i got into real estate and i was like i totally regret that because you thought you had to yeah i mean we all do we i all did i did yeah. See, there's nothing better though than when you like hit that realization where you like you take off the name tag and you throw it down and you're like never again <laughs> like, i'm gonna be me Wait, take it Screw or you it. polo shirt <laughs> yeah dude and then you really just like you said the really liberating thing about it too is that like all of the people who you know, we're kind of probably even confused by who you were trying to be. Now they're pre-screening yeah. themselves out of it. And like you said, your vibe attracts your tribe. So now the people who are gravitating mm-hmm. towards you are the people you want to work with anyway. It's so beautiful. Yeah. It, it made real estate so much more fun then, for sure. I have a question about content buckets. Mm-hmm. So when we talked yes. about we talked about ideal client and we talked, you said content bucket plan, and then you listed a bunch of things, but I my brain works in like categories. So do you have oh, yeah. like 
oh, actual yeah. categories for that? Or what are your recommendations outside of like, oh, what do I like to do? And you write them all down, or maybe that's it. Yeah, uh, I have a rule of three. Okay. It's three content buckets, three posts per week as a real estate agent. You don't need to do any more. You can do less, but that should be your target. Three content buckets, three posts a week, three stories a day. Rule of three. So content buckets, it all depends on who your ideal client is. Because if your ideal client's a first-time home buyer, or it's an investor, or it's somebody who wants to buy short-term rentals, or if somebody wants to buy a luxury property, maybe they want waterfront, maybe they want to buy condos, maybe it's single family. Like It all depends on who your ideal client is. And you build the buckets that match that ideal client. Right. Let's can we pick a and, scenario just to make it yeah. super relevant? Just pick one of the your favorite ones of those type of clients and then we can run through it. Okay. Um ooh, let's see. Uh I feel like a lot of people say first time home buyer, so I'm not gonna say that. Ooh. Um so <laughs> I'm gonna say first time because ho- what everybody wants nowadays, they're like, Well, I want people upsizing. So they're selling their first home and buying their second home. So let's talk upsizers okay. because that's that's what most people want. They're like, I'll pick first time home buyers or I'll pick luxury. Like, no, let's pick the one that everybody wants but nobody says. They want people who are selling their house and buying a house. They want a double ended deal. Perfect. So let's pick them, right? So it depends on who they are as people too. Like, what? How much upgrading are they doing? Are they in a four hundred thousand dollar house and moving up to eight hundred? Right? Are they in a five hundred moving up to a million? Like, because they're upsizing. There's probably a couple of things that have happened, right? They either got married, right? They had more kids, they got a better job, right? Or they're relocating. Those are usually the only four scenarios that go in there because with the interest rates the way they are now, there's there used to be have to move and want to move. There was a lot of want to moves in 2020, 21, 2022. Now there's the have to move people, right? And it usually only falls into one of those categories. So let's assume your ideal client are families that are upsizing in your area. Okay. They're upsizing. Maybe they have more kids or they're trying to get in a different school district, right? They're doing well at work. So what's going to matter to them? Well, if they have more kids and all that stuff, they're probably busy, right? They don't have time to do a lot of the research. So one piece of content absolutely has to be, how do you make that transition? Right. So one bucket of content is how do we transition from owning a house and buying one at the same time? How to sell when you have to buy. Or how to buy when you have to sell. That's one bucket of content. We can talk more a bit about like what that looks like in a minute. The second bucket of content, you're a real estate agent. And if people want to move or need to move and they're upsizing, what do they want to know? Where's the best neighborhood? Where's the best houses? Where's the best builder? Right. So there has to be a neighborhood or a house focus to it. So that's a bucket. Like, where are they going to? That's my next bucket. The third bucket is. What's life going to be like when they live there? What are the amenities that are available to them if they move to this particular neighborhood, move to this particular location? What's the local coffee shop now? What's the event around the corner? Where, did the, where does the Easter egg hunt happen for the kids? Right. So the three buckets of content for somebody upsizing is you're being a knowledge broker. How do you make that transition when you own a house and you want to buy one? Your second bucket of content is where are they going to? What are the neighborhoods? What are the houses? And that third bucket is, what is life going to be like when you get there? So what that comes down to is, we could call it... And, and I like video first. Carousels are great. I make a lot of those. But reels are for reach. right? Videos are for reach. There's no better way for people to connect with you than to see you face-to-face, eye-to-eye. They're going to make a connection. There's just people want to work with people, not necessarily pretty camera graphics. right? Pretty camera graphics are great. But when you show up and you talk to somebody... That is just a whole nother level. So let's talk knowledge broker content. The how do you make that transition, right? Once a week, you should be talking about how to make that transition. It doesn't always have to be a talking head style video where you're like this. It could be telling a story. You sitting in the front seat of your car, you whip out your phone. I just got done meeting with one of my clients that lives in X neighborhood and they're selling their house and they're moving to this other area. And here's three things that I learned. See, that's different than here's three things you need to know when you're selling your house. You're telling the same information, but through the eyes of you actually being an active real estate agent. And I think that's where most agents mix the mark. We all talk about storytelling. And they're like, well, how do I tell a story? Just say what you did. It doesn't have to be edited crazy. You don't have to have all the graphics and the effects. People are now craving more of that real and authentic content. I mean, think about HGTV. It's all behind the scenes content. It's not highly edited. Dude, Without your or, phone sitting in the front seat of your car. 
Yeah, Sam Solik. Is that his name on YouTube? Do you know who I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the big like weightlifter dude. dude. Yeah. Yeah. His videos yeah. are like not edited at all. I mean, they're slightly <laughs> edited, but they're like nothing fancy. And I really do. I it's totally just cut. agree with you. It's just cut. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's coming back. I think that people, you're totally right. They want raw. They don't want the highly filtered, the highly polished. They like want your booger hanging out of your nose and you on the skateboard with it. The, they want that. Anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt. Please keep going. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I need to check my you nose. You don't have a booger. You look great. <laughs> Um, so like just telling the story through the eyes of just being an active real estate agent, because people just want to see that you're busy, right? So there's moments every day as an active real estate agent, you should be able to pop on camera and tell a story. And here's my trick for getting good at that. Okay. Take out your phone, record it. Don't post it. Just get used to doing that. Every time you leave an appointment, you've probably learned something. Figure out, all right, how do I say my first line, my hook? Say what I learned and just get it across in less than 60 seconds. Record it, save it on your phone, don't post it. Then when you get up the nerve to post it, share it to your stories because it's going to disappear in 24 hours. Guess what? If you get reactions and people, you're like, oh my God, people really like that story. Turn that because you saved it on your phone into a reel, turn it into a video and just add like a thumbnail on the front of it. And that's your knowledge broker content. Super easy to do. Dude, I'm so impressed. That was such a good tip. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the next one, right? Houses and neighborhoods. So uh, I know you've talked to some people that I've worked with in the past that do great at home tours. So I don't want to really talk about home tours. I want to talk about neighborhood tours because lots of people do home tours. I think there's people that do a great job at that. There's people that do a crappy job at that. There's an easy way to do a good job at it. But neighborhood tours, I think are where it's at because... I'm going to raise my hand right now. People out there in podcast land, you can't see me raising my hand. But all of you, I want you, as you're in your car, as you're working out, as you're at your desk, raise your hand if you've ever said, oh, we'll just drive around there after five o'clock to see what the neighborhood's like. How many thousands of hands are going up right now, Shelby? Right? We told somebody to drive over somewhere after people get off work and school to see what the neighborhood's like. Yeah. That's a cop out. That's BS. I think every freaking agent, if you want to sell in a neighborhood, go into the neighborhood, do a walk and talk, grab your phone, throw it on a, throw it on a gimbal or no gimbal and tell people about the neighborhood. Are you looking for insert whatever the unique feature is about the neighborhood? Then you've got to check out this neighborhood name. Then you're going to tell them. So you told them what it is. You're going to tell them where it is. What's the relationship of that neighborhood to like some well-known area? So what is the neighborhood? Where is it? What are the houses like? How big are they? How much are they? What style are they? What amenities does the neighborhood have? And what is your local coffee shop? What's the local grocery store? What's the local amenity that's not in the neighborhood that's nearby that's going to be part of your daily life? So that's a framework, a structure for doing a neighborhood video. And you can just be walking, talking about the neighborhood. I used to hang my phone out the window and just drive in my Jeep. And then just overlay that with as B-roll over top of me just like talking and walking to the camera. And when you tease that last part, like, hey, by the way, if you live in this neighborhood, you've definitely got to check out my favorite coffee shop, Black and White. It's about two miles away. It's going to be your daily spot, right? Then guess what? Your next video you go do, you go highlight that local coffee shop. So your content ties together, right? You're telling people how to move up on Monday. On Wednesday, you're showing them the neighborhood they can move up to. And then on Friday, you're showing them the teaser that you left them on Wednesday, so you want them to come back and check out your content. Oh, what is the best local coffee shop if I move there? Right? And it's just, I call them three second sexy clips. You go to a coffee shop, you take three second vertical video clips, take 10 of them, just walking in the coffee shop. It could be a brewery, it could be a yoga studio, whatever business your ideal client likes. You piece those together, do a little voiceover on it, and you're just introducing people. It's like, Hey, if you decide to move to X neighborhood, this is going to be your favorite coffee shop. And this is why. And then you just tell them, you tag the coffee shop, you share that. And then you've got easy buckets of content that are talking exactly to what your ideal client is going to want. And it's infinitely repeatable. Infinitely. You can rinse and repeat that every single week. To confirm... This because now it, it sounds like we're leaning towards Instagram now, but to confirm, it's kind of like the same concept, but then you just have to be aware of which platform for, right? Or am I? I'm overthinking you, it. That you that I think you're over, that content is yeah. perfect for Instagram or Facebook or YouTube Shorts, either or, because you're sharing that content directly. If you're on Facebook, share it to your personal. 
don't worry about your business page. Business page content is only for running ads. Share it to your personal because guess what? You're trying to educate people with your knowledge broker stuff. You're sharing a story of your daily life that's perfectly acceptable for your personal page. You're showing off the best places to live or the best houses. That goes to your personal page on Facebook. And then you're sharing your favorite local restaurant or amenity. That's personal. Share that on Facebook. All of that type of content I was telling you, I shared it to Facebook. I, that, I never shared that stuff to Instagram. But if my clients were on Instagram, I would have shared it. That content is cross-platformable, right? And when you're on Facebook, yeah, that I made up a word. I think that works. I'm so, so good. I like like coffee shop. Uh, what I used to do is every Friday, I made content. It's called What's Up Wake Forest. And what I would do is highlight my favorite local business and then what was going on in town that weekend. And in the Facebook post, I would at or tag the local business I was highlighting. And I would at or tag like the town or the event. And then I would check in at the local business if I was on Facebook. I would not post it as a reel because reels didn't exist when I was doing it. I posted as a feed video. I would still post it as a feed video today. And here's why. Because the reels on Facebook are for reaching people that are not in your audience. If you're trying to stay top of mind and reach the audience that you already have, which is what I was trying to do, it's going in my feed. And I start tagging those people. After doing that for three solid months, the mayor of our town reached out to me, sent me a DM on Facebook and was like, Hey, I see you're loving on our town. Would you be the MC for the Christmas parade? Dude, and I'm like, out. what does that involve? She's like, I'll give you a microphone and you're going to lead the uh, the chainsaw ice carving battles. And it's going to be like four hours long and you just have a microphone. And you get to walk around the crowd. And there's going to be 10,000 people there. I was like, yes, I'll do that, please. It was after just like three months of posting on Facebook, like what's going on in town and highlighting a local business. They were like, that's cool that you do that. Right. That that can work on Instagram and that can work on Facebook. Either or. Either or. Okay. Okay. I'm with you. I and I love, man, I love our framework. <laughs> I love buckets and I love a framework. So this it is It makes it simple. Simple. Exactly. Exactly. I think that the part that a lot of listeners might get hung up on, because they're like, oh, I got the framework, but then they'll get in their heads about like the hook. You know, you said it so naturally, like, are you are you looking for blank? Then you got to check out blank. But it's even like those first words. And I hear, I mean, mm -hmm. I see everywhere online. They're like, hi, this is Shelby. I'm with this X, Y, and Z real estate. And that's their first three seconds instead of like the hook. I don't, I don't even know what my question is. I'm just like trying to vocalize what I think I, I don't know. What are your thoughts? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, no, no, no. There's, uh, there's hook formulas, right? Uh, there's a lot of hook formulas that you can use. If you go for everybody out there, if you go to my Instagram at it's Will Draper, uh, scroll down a while, a while, and there is a carousel that gives you a framework for hooks. And there's like seven slides in there, and there's five hooks for each other. There's like thirty different hooks you can use, and it's all about how to start your videos. So let's let's break it down each content bucket. Maybe give some people some frameworks. I'm just going to do it on the fly. Right. So if it's a Love knowledge it. broker video, right? Um, if you're thinking about moving to Brooklyn, here's three things I just learned meeting with one of my buyer clients. If you're thinking about moving to insert area, here's what I just learned meeting with a client. That's a framework you can use. You can rinse and repeat that. If you live in insert your area and you're thinking it might be time to move, here's five things I just learned. If you live in X area and you're thinking, I'm stuck in my house, I'm never going to get out of here. Here's the one thing I would tell you to do. Right? You notice the word you is in all of those. The more you use the word you, you're talking to somebody because even though social media, which is why I love it, it's a one to many relationship. Right? I don't know how many people are going to listen to this podcast, right? But every video you put out, every post you put out, thousands of people see it. But you're only talking to people one at a time. And I think that's what a lot of people forget. They're like, hey, y'all, like you're not talking to a group of people. They're not sitting on the can together with like 10 people watching your video. They're in there by themselves to have some private time away from their kids. Not that I can relate to that or not, but not. it's it's one to one. So say you, right? Hey, you, right? Are you? So neighborhoods, houses. If you're going to do a house tour, let's take a tour of insert the type of house, insert the unique feature. There's your framework. You don't need to ever change that. Let's take a tour of this condo in the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Let's take a tour of this single family home right downtown Wake Forest. Those first three words stay the same. You just 
insert the type of property, insert the unique feature. That's it, right? Or you can say, what does X get you in Y location? That's how you can mix it up. Let's go back to the neighborhood tour examples. Are you looking for, okay, are you looking for a custom built home in one of the best luxury neighborhoods in X city? Then you've got to check out this. Are you looking for a waterfront property in Y town? Then this is the spot for you. Because it's about what people are looking for. I was I met with this um, this lady is out of Southern California. I met with her earlier this week, and she's like, "My content sucks. Like nothing's working. I did one video, it got a million views. I got a bunch of leads, and then it died. And then I went and looked at her profile, and we looked at the video, and I was like, "Is that the video?" And she was like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Well, there's no more like it." She was like, "Well, I didn't know why that one worked." The hook on that video was. Are you looking for a two bed, one bath with a casita that makes $1,000 a month? That's the hook. Every investor's like, hello, I, I, I want to I detach ADU, please, that makes $1,000 a month. I was like, that's the hook. You're saying, are you looking for or do you want this? And then you're giving people a yes or no, right? So every hook, somebody should be able to answer yes or no. Because if you give people too many options, they can't make a decision. Just like when you go to Netflix, I'm probably guilty of this. I never watch anything on Netflix, but I'll look at a whole lot of trailers. I'm like, I don't know. And I see that thumbnail. I'm like, "Mm, I don't know. Do I want to watch that? Mm, I don't know. Too many decisions. But if I went and there was two titles, I'd probably pick one and watch it. So your hooks, if you can say the word you, are you looking for, do you want, give them a yes or no answer. Okay. Now let's talk about the local spot. Right, the local spot. Is this the best coffee in all of Y City? These are my favorite tacos. This is my favorite date night spot. That's when you start to make it personal, right? Like, I love going here with my daughter. Let's go check out Lumpy's ice cream. That that brings a little humanity to it. So I have that since it's not real estate specific. It's like I'm just sharing a part of my life, but I'm also sharing and giving love to people in my community. So those are frameworks that you can just rinse and repeat. You don't have to come up with new hooks. Like, like I have a notes thing that's got hooks. It's like four pages long of all the different hooks. And I was like, it really condenses down to just like simple frameworks. Are you looking for this? Are you looking for that? Would you like this? And tell a story about these local businesses. Is this the best coffee? This is my favorite taco place. This is where I take my daughter for ice cream. Like, that's a hook in and of itself because it like, oh, brings humanity into it. And guys, if you're sitting here like I am, like I want your notes sheet, like I want every little bit of everything, just remember that you can go to realestaterockstarsnetwork.com and get the tool that Will submitted for us. It is the social media playbook, 15 lead generation questions for real estate agents. And I'm super excited to dive in. And then also, of course, he already mentioned going to his Instagram, which I was stalking beforehand. And there is a ton of gems on there. So it's Will Draper is the Instagram uh, channel. That's not the right word. Um, handle, handle. Oh my I think. god, handle. dude! I just blacked out. <laughs> channel. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, that well, was great. That was great, dude. We only have like ten-ish minutes left, and I have two okay. questions. Okay. I'm gonna let you choose which direction we go. Oh, so okay. Sounds one, good. One you mentioned earlier. You said business page content is only for running ads. That was a quote that I was interested in. And then mm-hmm. also in my stocking free show, you had a, a post about optimize your everything. And I'm curious about what that means. So here are your two paths. Which one would you like to travel down? Oh, I think I can hit both in a short amount of time. Oh, I think it. I can hit both. Okay. Oh. Let's talk about the Facebook one first. Okay. I always get this question. Should I post it to my Facebook personal or my Facebook business? Facebook and Meta is in business to make money. They want you to run ads, which is why when you look at your Facebook business posts, they don't get a lot of reach. You don't get a lot of engagement. You don't get a lot of comments, right? Because it tends to be just just listed, just sold, testimonials, may, uh, you know, maybe listing videos. Nobody's going to see that content. They want you to run ads on your business channel, right? We're, we don't, we're not a purveyor of goods. We're a purveyor of services as real estate agents. You're not going to get any reach on your business channel. All of your content, in my opinion, unless you feel like you want to run an ad behind it, should be on your personal page. Your business page is for running ads. Advertise an open house. uh, Boost a listing video. Post it to your business. Share it to your personal. That's okay. right? That's okay to share content to your personal. It's not going to get as much reach if you 
post it organically to your personal. So anything you post to your Facebook business page should have the intent of, I could or I would run ads behind this, either for marketing and branding for digital billboards or to do like a lead ad form. So like lead magnets, you know, buyer guides, seller guides, all that type stuff. So I think that nips that one. Uh, the second one was optimize your everything. I love this one because I don't think enough people do it. And this does, this is cross platform. Okay. This is Instagram and Facebook. So I'm going to talk generically about both kind of at the same time. So optimize your everything. One, your name. Your name should be your name, especially on Instagram. If you have, you know, kill kitty 74, like that doesn't really help. Like it should be Shelby, your last name. And maybe that's it. Or it could be Shelby Realtor, right? So mine is It's Will Draper. I couldn't get Will Draper because there's like a bunch of other ones out there. So I had to like find a way to get it. Because when you get to be known, you get to be known by your name. It is all personal branding. When people search in your name, you want to be found in as many ways as possible. Can so I ask a question profile name. Yes. This is a personal question. Yeah. The girl in the front with her arm raised. Guys, if you're not watching on YouTube, what are you doing? This is so fun. Um, <laughs> okay. So the name... In, when I first got into real estate back in 2018, it was real estate with Shelby mm -hmm. Osborne. Then I got engaged a couple of years later and I was like, oh, my last name is changing, which really actually screwed me up on SEO in a lot of ways because Shelby Osborne mm -hmm. has so much more stuff than Shelby Johnson, which is my name now. But then I switched to the Shelby show because I was there was a time where I was going to be a YouTube star. It was a whole nother phase, whatever. The Shelby show. Um, at this point in time, I have recently been considering changing my name back to something that is like Shelby Johnson, you know? And so at this point when I've done how many podcasts I have, you know, done a lot of work where I'm like, follow me on the Shelby show. Come talk to me on the Shelby show. Help, like, do you think, you know, just rip off the bandaid better now than in 15 years? Or what are your thoughts on the Shelby show? When you go, by the way, like to the page on Instagram in particular, it says mm -hmm. Shelby Johnson real estate, like and where you says real Draper, the real estate content coach. But like, can you, what, yep. what are your thoughts? What advice do you have for me? I, I think I like the Shelby show. It's unique, right? It still has Shelby in it. And then the next part I was going to say is like, it has your name and then what you do. Right, because that's the next part. If you're on Instagram, besides your handle, have your name and what you do. If you're a realtor or a real estate agent, depending on if you want to affiliate with NAR, like whatever that bullshit is, right? Like you decide for yourself. You have to say what your name is and what you do. And then beyond that, on Instagram at least, you have three lines of text. On Facebook, you have a different number of characters, but a similar type thing. Say, what can people expect? from following you on Instagram or becoming your friend on Facebook, what can they expect? What type of content do you post? The next is, who are you for? right? And those two kind of tie together. And then three is typically going to be your call to action. What do you want them to do? right? So if you're a real estate agent, Shelby Johnson, uh, rock star real estate agent, and then your location. right? Next to that, you know, highlighting, uh, showcasing the best properties, cool neighborhoods, and best local spots. That could be your, those are your content buckets. You're, you're telling people your content buckets on your profile. Yes, you could do that on Facebook too. Your next line down, you know, uh, move up buyer specialist or first time seller specialist, uh, relocation expert, first time home buyer guru, like whatever it is, like whatever your special, whatever your niche is, new construction, new construction queen, like put that on there. And then the next one down, DM me home to get started or send me a DM to chat, like give people a call to action. Like mine says, join my membership, right? It points down, it tells people what I want them to do. So that's the next part of optimization. So your name, your title, the, your bio, if you will, right? And that goes for Facebook and Instagram. Then it comes down to your post. Okay. So it's not only what your post looks like, it's the caption that's in your post. People are going to Instagram and TikTok and all of these other platforms, especially YouTube, and they're starting to use them as search engines. They're going to Google less and less. And like when people are like, huh, what am I going to do in Charleston, South Carolina this weekend? I'm going to go to Instagram or TikTok and look up Charleston, South Carolina things to do. Guess what? If your caption says Charleston, South Carolina things to do, and in your copy, it says that, and you're saying, here's some things to do in Charleston, South Carolina this weekend, and then your thumbnail has Charleston on there, things to do. That's why it's optimize everything because I hate to say the word, the algorithm, right? But the algorithm gods, they're listening to everything you say. 
They're reading your caption, anything that's written down. They trans they transcribe everything you say anyway because those buttons are built into the freaking app. Your thumbnails, they're doing the read recognition on your thumbnails and they're checking your hashtags. So if you really want to be found, figure out the keywords and the, the niche you want to be known for, the location. If you're a real estate agent, every piece of content needs to have your freaking location in it. Like if it's Charleston, South Carolina, say Charleston in... The, the coffee video, say Charleston in the neighborhood and the house video, say Charleston in the, if you live in this neighborhood and you're going to sell your house in Char like say Charleston in the caption, say Charleston and your hashtag, say Charleston on your thumbnail, have Charleston, have it be everywhere. Optimize everything because SEO on social media is a thing, especially in 2024. And if you're not paying attention to everything SEO related to every item on your social media, you're going to miss the mark. Dude, it's so good. So I think I hit both. I think I hit both. I hate you so much. I, I would like to have this show <laughs> go on longer for per my own personal. Like, we'll have you back on, but it's really just like, like help me with my life. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Okay. Will, before we move to wrap up, what did we not hit on today that you really wanted to touch on? Uh, I'll leave one more thing. Uh, I'm a big proponent of video. Video is the best way to engage clients to attract new people to stay top of mind. And it can be overwhelming. Uh, you're like, Oh my God, I gotta make all these videos. And like he said, all these things about SEO. And like, if you just want to start the simplest thing you can do, the simplest thing you can do. And it's the thing that I've done that's had the greatest impact on my business is I send people one-to-one -one videos a lot. And one-to-one -one videos, it's as simple as if it's somebody's birthday, I'm not posting on their wall. I'm not sending them a birthday card. I pick out my phone and I do this. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And I can't sing with a shit, right? <laughs> but I will sing happy birthday, make fun of myself, and I will text them that video. I'm not sending it on social media. Usually if I have their phone number, I'm texting it. If it's on social, I'll DM it to them. It's a personal one-to-one -one video. If you only do one thing to stay top of mind and to go deeper on your relationships and to have more people remember you send those videos. I've probably sold more houses from singing happy birthday to people and then them randomly getting ahead and talk to them in nine months because I don't call people, but I'll send them that video. Like, Oh, by the way, we were going to sell our house. I'm like rad, like, like do one-to-one -one videos. That's it. Perfect. Love it. Wrap up question. Number one, what is your favorite app or tool? Ooh, uh, my favorite app or tool. I, I'm such a app cut junkie right now. Like it's getting so, so good. And I use it for my desktop and I don't hire out any of my editing. All of my social content that you all see on Instagram is 100% me. I don't have any help doing any of it. I love using CapCut and playing with it and all of the other things that go along with it. So CapCut's my jam. Mm, love that answer. I just started playing around on it and I'm such a boomer, I feel like it. But just a little bit of time, I'm already like out of boomer. I'm into millennial stage. Um, okay, Will, what events are you going to in the next 12 months? Ooh, um, I want to go hit up the Ford event with Neil Dingra. Uh, that's one I definitely want to hit up. Um, I want to hit up VidCon. That's the, the YouTube uh, big conference and social media marketing world next year. Th that's definitely one I want to hit up. Uh, I missed it this year. Uh, I've been traveling around speaking at a bunch of conferences myself and haven't had a chance to actually go to any. So those are the ones that are in my sites coming up. Cool. How can listeners and me help you in your business? Uh, everything I do is on Instagram. You guys head to my Instagram. Uh, there, There's a link right on my bio. There's a bunch of different ways you guys can reach out to me. I run a uh, membership program that... You know how people have a bunch of online courses and stuff? I made a membership to courses and I put out new courses every single month. I do group coaching. We have weekly Q&A calls because... I know it's expensive to hire people to do one-on-one -on -one consulting. But when you can do it in a group environment, not everybody can show up all the time. And then everything I'm talking about you today, I make step-by-step -step tutorial courses on that. And instead of spending $1,000 for one course, you can pay $100 a month and you get a new course every single month, the entire year. I was actually filming all morning this morning. We're doing skippable in-stream ads for YouTube. That course is going to be coming out in the next week or two. And it's going to be a full in-depth four-hour workshop of not only how to set up an ad on a YouTube channel, but 
all the scripting for all the videos you would ever need. More than just market update videos, we have lead magnet videos. I have a buyer videos, uh, how to do listing videos the right way. And we go super in depth. Everything is tutorials, thumbnails, titles, everything. Uh, and we do stuff like that every single month. So if you don't want to do that, I put out tons of free content for everybody on Instagram. Uh, go check me out there. And final time, I know we mentioned it a few times, but where can people find you? Instagram. It's Will Draper. That's the place. I do have a YouTube channel. Uh, I've been focusing all my time and attention on Instagram recently. I am going to be kicking that back off soon, but I'm so busy making all of these courses and tutorials and I'm putting out new long form content every week for the people inside on my program that I'll get back to YouTube probably in a podcast format. And I would love to have you on there. Okay. When I get that rocking and rolling, but that's been in the plans. Dude, so cool. Guys, it's Will Draper on Instagram. Go there. And you guys know the drill. I am the Shelby Show. And apparently I'm keeping that handle, the Shelby Show. Oh, yeah. But Aaron is Aaron Amuchastegui. He's the owner of the show. Go hang out with us. We love to hear from you. And um, that is all we have for today. I was going to do some more other stuff, but this has been great. Will, you're awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show and Real Estate Rockstars. Thanks for listening. <laughs>